In this lab, we'll exploit a DOM vulnerability via a cache, and I'll show you how to work around the strict cacheability criteria that the cache has initially, and how to work around the course error that we'll get when trying to load in the JSON file. I'll also show you how the DOM XSS itself works. So let's switch to Burp and go to proxy and HTTP history. We want to grab the get request for the homepage here and send it to repeater and switch to repeater. Just going to send a request. Now you can see that we don't get any of those cache Oracle related headers. And that's because the front end cache server is refusing to cache this response here because it contains a session cookie. That makes sense because you wouldn't want to leak any session cookies of other users to other random users by caching it on the front end server. So we can work around that just by copying the cookie portion here and setting that in our request because if the cookie is set, then there's no reason for the backend server to set a cookie for us. So let's resend that request. And now we can effectively see the cache Oracle related headers. So we can see that we hit the cache, that the age of our cache response was 25 seconds, and that it will expire in five seconds because it will reach the max age. So now that we've established that the homepage is a cache Oracle, let's also try adding a cache busters just so to be sure that we can work independently from any other live users that are actually browsing the real front page, just so we don't impact them. So I'm going to add a cache buster for a value of and then some random input here, and then resend the request, see that we get a cache miss and then a cache hit on the second request. But if I make a minor change to the cache buster, we get a cache miss again. So that confirms that adding a cache buster in the query string works, and we can safely continue our probing. So now let's do a scan with Paraminer just to find any unkeyed input. So I'm going to right click and then go to extensions, Paraminer, guess params, and then guess headers. You can leave the defaults here, just click OK. I'm going to click cancel because I've already ran the scan before. Because I'm using Burp Suite Professional Edition, I can find results under target. And I can find here under cache poisoning, the second result that it found is it found or identified the X forwarded host header. Now, if you're using the Burp Suite Community Edition, you have to go to extensions and then to paraminer. And then you have to go to the output tab here. And that's where you'll also be able to find the output where it found X forwarded host, for example. But let's see what we can do with that X forwarded host header. So I'm going to go back to repeater. And then in this request here, I'm going to add below the host header, X forwarded host header for a value of example.com. And then just going to send this request, we get a cache hit after a second request. So let's search for example.com here in the response. And yep, we can find a data dictionary with a host key where our input there from the exported host header is reflected into. But by itself, that doesn't mean it's dangerous. Just let's see where, where else data is used. So I'm going to search for that data dictionary. And it's actually used at the bottom where it is taken data.host. So our value for that was example.com. And it's passing it into the init geolocate function, which is a JavaScript function, which is then taken the URL, which we can control. So instead of example.com, it could be our exploit server, and then loading in resources, JSON, geolocate.json. So let's have a closer look at geolocate.json first, just to see if it could be a valuable source for our DOM XSS. So I'm going to go back to the proxy server. I'm going to locate geolocate.json here and send it to repeater, switch to repeater. So this is geolocate.json. I'm just going to send that request. And the response we get back is a dictionary, a country key with a value of United Kingdom. So let's see if that is used as a source somewhere or sent to a sync so that we can maybe inject a malicious input here. So let's go back to the proxy server. And then we want to look at the geolocate.js function. So let's go here and then send the request. And this is the init geolocate function that we saw here that is being called with our own input for data.host. And then it is doing something dangerous here on line 21, because it's using div.innerHTML. And that would allow us, well, that would be a valid sync for us to inject HTML or JavaScript, if we can control any of the inputs here. And we can, because the first thing it is loading is the URL that we can control, which loads in the JSON, so geolocate.json. And then the geolocate.json becomes the variable j. And from j, it is actually in inner HTML reading in j.country. So that would be j would be this file here, and .country would be the value that we set here. 
So we could actually host our own version of geolocate.json, where in here, for the value of country, we actually do a cross-site scripting injection. So let's put that to practice. Let's go back to our first request here. And then we want to edit the value of exported host and post it to our, or change it to our exploit server. So I'm going to go to the exploit server in a new tab and copy the host portion here. And then go back to burp and just replace that. And the next thing we want to do, it's then going to take this here in the init geolocate function. So we want to make sure that we have the correct path within our exploit server. So this becomes slash resources slash JSON slash geolocate.json. The content type changes because this will become application slash JSON. And then for the JSON itself, let's go to geolocate.json and just copy this here. And then go back to the exploit server and paste this. But instead of United Kingdom, we want to inject uh, HTML here. So we're going to say for an image tag, we're going to say sources uh, one, so we'll error, and then on error, we'll actually show a alert pop up with containing document dot cookie. Let's close the brackets. And then save this and then switch back to burp, go back to our request here. And let's try sending it because it should be ready now. So let's send it, we get a cache miss, we get a hit. So that means that yep, our exploit server is here. Now let's try visiting our page uh, with the cache buster. So I'll go back to the lab, paste that, hit enter, and we don't get a pop up. And if we open the uh, developer console, and we go to the network tab. And let's just try again. We see that for geolocate.json, we get a course error. So you can see course error here. So if we actually try and go, oh, there we go. If we try and go to the response, you can see here failed to load response data. So that's the client side itself. That's Google Chrome here, accepting the headers, but then rejecting the response data because of a course error. And that's because if we switch back to burp and go to geolocate.json, we can see that the geolocate.json file is fetched with fetch mode cores. So we need to relax the same origin policy. And we can control that ourselves because we can go to the exploit server and we can add a response header access control allow origin. And we can set it to star wildcard just to accept anything and then store this. And now if we go back to burp and then resend this request, we can see that we get a cache miss, then a cache hit on the second request. And if we go back to the lab itself, and let's just clear this out here and refresh it, then we can see that we get the pop up. And that's because the geolocate.json uh, course error has disappeared because we can read the response now by using this access control allow origin response header. So now let's solve the lab by removing the cache buster. So I'm going to go back to burp. And we were using the cache buster here. So let's remove that to actually poison the response for the actual front page. And let's send this request again, we got a cache miss, we get a cache hit. And we can confirm that we can see the uh, our exploit server here. So our, our injection worked. So let's go back to the lab. And then instead of the cache buster version here, let's just load in the actual version, and we get the pop up. So the actual front page, and if we refresh, we get the pop up still. And we also get congratulations, you've solved the lab. If you don't get this uh, solved lab pop up yet, all you need to do is go back here and make sure that you keep repoisoning the home page until the lab has solved for you as it as it did for me, because the, the victim is browsing the site every 30 seconds. So you might have a small timing issue, but just keep repoisoning uh, the home page. That's it. That's all there is to it. I hope this was helpful to you and thank you for watching.